RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents Transcribed, the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Today, we are living in a scientific age. It's an age of great inventions, and those who have the foresight to get in on the ground floor will make fortunes. Tonight, Phil gets in on the ground floor of a startling new discovery. But more about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. No matter where you live, you can receive all the TV stations in your area with new RCA Victor television. And the reason is this. RCA Victor's automatic 16-channel UHF-VHF tuner. RCA pioneered in the development of UHF television and, in cooperation with NBC, operated the world's first regularly scheduled UHF television station. As a result of this exclusive experience, RCA Victor brings you a tuner proved far more sensitive than many others. And it's automatic. Turn one knob, click, there's your station. So if you have UHF television now, or expect it in your area, buy a new RCA Victor with the automatic UHF VHF tuner. It's your assurance that if there's a picture in the air, you'll get it. You can buy any new RCA Victor television with this wonderful built-in UHF VHF tuner at modest extra cost, or you can add it later, when and if UHF television reaches your area. 1953 RCA Victor Television can be yours for as little as $199.95. The budget low price of the 17-inch table model Wayne. See the entire new line of sets at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow. And remember, every year, more people buy RCA Victor than any other television. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. For the past month, Phil has gone around in the belief that he is the last of the Mohicans. However, last week he found out that the whole thing was a hoax and that Andrew Fasthorse, the man who sold him the idea, was a swindler. This disclosure was too much for Phil, and as we look in on the Harris home, we find our heartbroken hero has locked himself in his room and refuses to be consoled. Just to think that this whole thing was a hoax and I'm not a Mohican chief. Oh, Andrew, you led me to think that I was a big man. Now all I have left to console me are just a few little Indian souvenirs you sold me. My souvenirs. A small birch bark canoe. <laughs> Some buffalo shards of blue. A scalp with dandruff, too, among my souvenirs. <laughs> A few more tokens rest Within my treasure chest The next line is the best But I can't use it here <laughs> Who's there? Phil, Phil, please open the door You can't stay locked in that den forever You go away and leave me alone I just want to lie here on my bed of nails And punish myself <laughs> Stop now, look, you haven't had anything to eat or drink for three days, and I brought you something. I prepared your favorite meal. I don't care. I don't want... Well, I guess she's right. After three days without nourishment, I should have something in my stomach. I'll take it, honey. Good. May I bring it in? No, just pour it through the keyhole. <laughs> Throw the olive over the transom. <laughs> well, if you want this, open the door. Oh, all right. Well, it's about time. Now, here's your dinner. Eat it and then come in the other room. My brother Willie is I don't want to wa see him. I don't want to see anybody. Everybody knows that I was taken in by this Indian con man, and I'm ashamed to face him. They must all think I'm stupid. Oh, Phil, you're just being self-conscious. Everybody realizes it wasn't your fault and nobody thinks you're stupid. Well, Alice, how did you make out with... Oh, hiya, Willie. Hello, you big dope. <laughs> there you see, Alice. I told you, I told you. You even Willie. got him 
Willie, I won't have you talking that way to Phil. Why not? Because I'm married to him. But when you married him, you didn't know he was a big jerk. I did, too. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, he wasn't then. <laughs> Phil, you're always putting money in a sucker scheme or some business you don't know anything about. From now on, stick to the one thing you're successful at, showmanship. You have one of the greatest personalities in show business. Ha! He has all the personality of a wet cigar butt. <laughs> all right, now wait a minute. If there's one thing I've got, it's personality. My scintillating smile has been compared favorably to that of Lawrence Welk. <laughs> And it's surpassed only by Liberace's. <laughs> You've got to admit that you can't get more scintillating than that. Well, just promise me one thing, that you won't get mixed up with any more of these con men or invest in any get-rich-quick scheme. Honey, I've learned my lesson. I've learned my... I'll get that. I promise you I won't invest a penny in any more get-rich-quick businesses. I found out once... Oh, hello, Elliot Hey, Curly, how would you like to invest some money in the greatest invention since the two-ounce shot glass? <laughs> all you have to do is invest $100 Go away, nobody home But, Curly, all you have Get your foot out of the door, bud Try the other side of the street Get lost, beat it I ain't gonna invest nothing with no con men Con men? Well <laughs> Curly, can you remember me ever conning you into any proposition where you lost money? Uh, yes You remember, huh? <laughs> Let me put it this way Name one thing that I steered you wrong on Okay How about the time you sold me that box and kangaroo with the glass chin? <laughs> Hopalong did not have a glass chin Some gamblers got to him and paid him to take a dive <laughs> Leave it to you to find a crooked kangaroo. <laughs> I ain't never for gonna get the time you sold me that racehorse, the one with the three legs. What a nag. Please, tripod was a sturdy steed. <laughs> I will admit he was a little sway back. A little sway back? His stomach bounced on the ground like a basketball. <laughs> the jockey had to dribble him around. <laughs> so I made a couple of little mistakes. After all, I'm only human. Now look, Curly, this proposition is guaranteed. All you have to do is put up a hundred dollars. Oh, that at the door. I... Oh, hello, Elliot. Hello, Alice. Goodbye, Alice. Now look, Curly. <laughs> For a minute monetary consideration, you can become an industrial tycoon. Elliot, stop it. What's the matter? I say something dirty? <laughs> <laughs> now, Elliot, Phil is not investing in anything. But all he has to do is invest a few dollars and he can become rich in no time. Now, Phil, don't listen to him. There is no way you can invest a few dollars and get rich quick. That is where you are wrong. And, Curly, you're a living proof of it. What do you mean? You invested $2 in a marriage license and became a millionaire overnight. <laughs> he only invested $1. He made me put up my half. Well, I only had two bucks at the time, and I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket. <laughs> now, Curly, just listen to my proposition. Believe me, it's great. All right, I'll listen, no, I'll listen. No, don't do it. No, please, really, Alice. Curly... What is every movie studio in Hollywood trying to get their hands on right now? The guy who invented television. <laughs> no. Curly, I'll tell you what the biggest thing is. Phil, don't listen to it. One me. of the greatest Hold inventions to hit Hollywood in a long Elliot, time is within talking. your grasp, Curly. I'll just have to see now, you I want you to pay attention to me and I'll explain the whole thing. This can love because I feel so well. No sobs, no sorrows, no sighs. This can't be love, I get no dizzy spell. My head is not in the sky. My heart does not stand still, just hear it beat. This is too sweet to be loved. This can't be love because 
I feel so well But still I love to look in your eyes The love bug is so infectious It gets under your skin And if you fight it It's gotta win This can't be love Because I feel so well No sobs, no sobs, no sorrows, no sighs This can't be love I get no dizzy spell My head is not in the sky My heart does not stand still Just hear it beat This is too sweet to be loved. This can't be loved because I feel so well. But still I love to look in your eyes. Love to look in your wonderful So you can see easily why this is such a great invention. How do you like my proposition, Curly? I heard everything but the words. <laughs> I didn't hear a word you said. Alice was making too much noise. I'll tell you again. This invention... Bill, don't you dare listen to him. She's fighting me. Here, Alice, dear. Have a piece of candy. Thank you. That'll keep her quiet for a while, Curly. <laughs> well, it makes you think so. It's a bonbon filled with laryngitis germ. <laughs> Stop it already. <laughs> Alice, if he wants to explain his proposition, let him. It ain't gonna do no harm just to listen. I'm only gonna listen. Thank you. Now look, Curly, the biggest thing in Hollywood right now is three-dimensional pictures, and I know a guy who invented a camera. Elliot, I got news for you. Three dimension is great, but every studio in Hollywood already has a three dimension camera. Three dimension, yes, but none of them have four dimension cameras. <laughs> four dimensions? People are investing money in this dimensional stuff. You want to put money in it, huh, Curly? No, 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 no. <laughs> of course, if you can show me pictures in four dimensions, I can see where it'd be great. I might invest a little in it. Oh, Phil, stop it. You don't even know what the four dimensions are. I do, too. The four dimensions are east, west, north, and south. <laughs> Ain't that right, Elliot? No, but in your case, I'll make an exception. Give me the money. Not so bad. <laughs> Now, first tell me, just how does this camera, how does it work? Well, I, I don't understand the scientific stuff. The inventor explained it to me in technical language, and all I know is that he's got a camera that makes the actors stand right out of the screen. Yeah? Mm-hmm. That sounds great. Yeah, but it's, it's probably expensive and takes special equipment like that Cinerama. They need a big curved screen in the theater. No, no, not with my friend's invention. He don't need a curved screen. He uses a flat screen and curved actors. <laughs> well, this puts a different light on the deal. I don't see anything wrong with investing a little money in a good curved actress. <laughs> he said actor. I know what he said. Leave me alone. <laughs> Elliot, if this guy's invention is so good, then how come the movie studios haven't bought it? They tried to, but he won't sell it to them. He's one of those eccentric inventors, and he don't trust nobody but me. He ain't eccentric. He's nuts. <laughs> I don't know if I'm interested. Now, look, in... Curly, why don't you see how the camera works first? I can arrange for us to get a private demonstration. If you don't like it, you don't have to put any money in it. Well, if I can see the thing before I invest, that's different. I'll tell you what you do, Elliot. Come Call on. your friend... And tell him that we're coming over. Well, I can't call him. He hasn't got a telephone. <laughs> he don't believe in it. <laughs> what do you mean he don't believe in it? When Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, my friend called him up and told him it would never work, and he's stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you want to drive over and see him? You think we ought to? No, I... Uh, it's all right with me if you want to. Well, I know, but it's it's kind of late to be calling on the guy. No, no, no. He stays up all night. 
Yeah? Where's the guy live? He's got a cute little place out in the woods. <laughs> Let's go. Elliot. Hmm? Is this the place where he lives? Yeah. It's a scary, creepy-looking joint, ain't it? Are you sure he don't mind having people drop in on him? No, he's a sweet old man. Open the gate, Curly. Okay. Where's the latch? Right under that sign on the fence that says, Don't touch high voltage. <laughs> It's cute. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. But I like the sign next to it, the one that says, Beware of vicious dogs, watch out for crocodiles, and don't tease the boa constrictor. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, I don't know what makes me say this, but I don't think he's in the mood for company. Oh, Curly, you're super sensitive. Those signs don't mean anything. He's a sweet, gentle old man, and he wouldn't harm a fly. Just likes to kill people, huh? <laughs> Look, I ain't gonna touch no electric fence. Now, let's get out no, of here. No, no, Curly. We came this far, and we're not gonna leave until we see Mr. Hyde. But I don't want to go into... <laughs> Mr. Hyde? What's his first name? Jekyll? <laughs> no, Formalda. <laughs> Formaldehyde <laughs> Why don't you go over and lean on the fence? Curly, I don't know his first name Everybody calls him Professor Now, come on All we gotta do to get in Is see Professor Hyde And that shouldn't be too hard No, no, no All we have to do is swim past the crocodiles Charm a boa constrictor And, uh, and it, it seems to me there was something else <laughs> Lassie and her babies <laughs> Will you come on, let's get out of here Curly, hey, I know a way we can get past these dogs How? You know the old saying, music has charms to soothe the savage beast? Yeah Well, you sing to them It ain't music, but it's as close as we can get <laughs> Don't let the stars get in your eyes Don't let the moon break your heart Love blooms at night, in daylight it dies Don't let the stars get in your eyes And keep your heart from me For someday I'll return And you know you're the only one I'll ever love Too many nights, too many stars Too many moons could change your mind If I'm gone too long, don't forget where you belong When the stars come out, remember you're mine the stars get in your eyes, don't let the moon break your heart. Love blooms at night, in daylight it dies, don't let the stars get in your eyes. Keep your heart for me, for someday I'll return, and you know you're the only one I'll ever love. Too many miles, too many days, too many nights to be alone. Oh, please keep your heart. While we're apart, don't linger in the moonlight when I'm gone. Don't let the stars, don't let the stars get in your eyes. Don't let the moon break your heart. Love blooms at night, in daylight it dies. Don't let the stars get in your eyes. Don't keep your heart for me, for someday I'll return. And you know you're the only one I'll ever They didn't like it, Curly. <laughs> Look, Elliot, we might as well forget about this whole thing and go home. I'm not going to no, walk... No, let's not give up. If there were only some way we could distract the dog's attention. If we had some bones we could throw them, we could keep them busy and sneak past. That's a good idea, great idea. But where are we going to find some bones to throw at them away out here? Hey, fellas, what are you doing out here? <laughs> well, if it ain't spare ribs, a bruisio. <laughs> Oh, uh, why, we came out here to see all of these beautiful dogs. Hey, Julius, uh, how would you like to feed them? I wouldn't mind, but I ain't got nothing for them to eat. 
Well, why don't you just walk in and let them take pot luck? <laughs> what are you trying to do? Make kibble out of me little body? <laughs> All we want to do oh, is Curly, just... look, he ain't gonna help us. We'll have to get rid of the dog some other way. Yeah, yeah, listen to that. How are we gonna get rid of them vicious hounds? And... I'll get rid of them for you. All right, you stupid-looking munch, go back to your kennel. Beat it before I cut your legs down and make dog's horns out of you. I'll be darned. Look at them run. They're afraid of them. Naturally, they're smart dogs. <laughs> they know when they've met their match. Hey, kid, how'd you do that? Easy. I delivered the groceries one day and they bit me, so I bit them back. <laughs> no wonder they're foaming at the mouth. Hey, look, kid, as long as you've been here before, you can help us. Take us in with you. Sure, come on. Hey, wait a minute. How do we get past this electric fence? I just turned the switch off right here. Now, follow me. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute now. What do we do when we come to them crocodiles? Show them you ain't afraid of them. Just wade past them like they wasn't there. If one of them opens his mouth to snap at you, raise your foot and kick him in the nose. What if I miss? You always got your other foot left for a second, <laughs> That's comforting. Oh, Curly, there's nothing to worry about now. We're at the house. I'll knock. Who's out there? It's me, Dr. Lewis. Oh, I'll be right out, Doctor. <laughs> Dr. Lewis? Yeah. I told him I was a fellow inventor to get on a good side of him. <laughs> Hello, Professor. Well, if it isn't Dr. Lewis, the inventor of the gas blanket. <laughs> gas blanket? I had to make it gas. He knows the guy who invented the electric blanket. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, it's so nice to have you here, Doctor. Won't you come in, please? Yes, thank you. Professor, I'd like you to meet my colleague, Dr. Harris. Dr. Harris? Yes, I invented the kerosene sheet. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know Julius here. Professor Julius, to you, the inventor of the cold burning pillar. <laughs> I do believe the little lad is pulling our leg, gentlemen. <laughs> but it is a great pleasure to have such distinguished scholars in my humble abode. Well, thank you, Professor. And look, we're very anxious to see that fourth dimension camera you invented. Oh, yes, of course, indeed you do. Oh, yes. That's a gem, and it will revolutionize the theater industry just as my other inventions have. Oh, you have other theatrical inventions? Oh, but yes, of course. My, my first contribution to the histrionic arts was to the legitimate theater. Um, I invented the reverso light. I could have sworn I invented that. <laughs> what is it? Well, now, with this invention, there's no such thing as a flop play. Every play is a hit. Well, how does that work? Well, you know the footlights that shine in the actors' faces and prevent them from seeing the audience? Yes. I reverse the lights. <laughs> <laughs> now they shine in the faces of the audience. They can't see a darn thing that's happening on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> saves a lot of money on actors, too. Professor, look, this is all very interesting, but we're just here to see your fourth dimension machine. Oh, yes, of course, indeed you do. My greatest brainchild, the flickerscope. Just be seated, gentlemen, and I shall proceed with the demonstration. <clears throat> now, these fourth dimensional pictures were taken with my revolutionary camera scope, and now you will see them through the magic of my amazing projector scope. We'll turn the lights out and start the demonstration. Wait a minute, Professor. Where's the uh, screenoscope? With my invention, we don't need a screenoscope. <laughs> now, just sit down, gentlemen. On what? On your cetoscope. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, how come you don't use a screen? Because with my fourth dimension projectoscope, the actors are not on the screen. But you, the audience, get the impression that they're right in the room with you, in front of you, in back of you, and all around you. Hey, 
that sounds great. Hey, turn it on. I want to see this. All right, here we go. Now, this is a Western picture, gentlemen, and watch the way the action takes place all around you. Hark, in the distance we hear the rustlers riding toward us. Here they come, look at them ride. Look at who ride, I don't see nothing. <laughs> well, they're in back of you, turn around. In back of me where? Too late, they just went that way. <laughs> Which away? Oh, they just rode out of the room. Now they're in the kitchen. <laughs> now they're coming out of the bathroom. They left the light on. <laughs> Here they come, everybody dies. I haven't seen a thing yet. <laughs> what was that? The U.S. Calvary! <laughs> hey, you near sight something? Oh, look at them in their beautiful blue uniforms against that red sky. Blue uniforms, red sky. Oh, yes, this is all in color. Oh, fine, now I'm not seeing nothing in color. <laughs> Here they come, they're chasing the rustlers. Riding into the distance. The end. <laughs> well, how'd you like it? Speedy little actors, aren't they? <laughs> I didn't see a darn thing. <laughs> no one. I'm looking all over. I'm looking everywhere. I didn't, not even Hoot Gibson, I didn't see. <laughs> Did you see anybody, Elliot? No. But I guess because I'm wearing my flat eyes today. <laughs> How did you like it, little Julia? Sensational. That was a beautiful demonstration of absolutely nothing. <laughs> This is Phil Harris again. Television for 1953 promises to be bigger and better than ever before, with millions of dollars going into great new shows featuring your favorite stars. And more and more people are going to be enjoying television reception at its finest, thanks to new, improved RCA Victor Television for 1953. Television that's now five ways finer than ever before. RCA Victor is America's finest television. And America's finest television deserves America's finest service. That's why wise RCA Victor television owners buy an RCA Victor factory service contract with their set. That way, they're sure of installation service and adjustment of their set by RCA's own technicians. Only RCA Victor television owners enjoy this coast-to-coast -coast factory service. Buy RCA Victor service with your RCA Victor television set. America's finest service for America's finest television. This is Phil again. Remember, your income tax must be filed by March 15th. Those filing this year for the first time may need advice and assistance in filling out their returns. Call at the local collector's office if you need help. Thanks and... Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Included in this program transcribed was Hans Conry. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. No record collection is really complete without the 101 bestsellers. These RCA Victor records by the world's greatest artists are the 101 top-selling records of all time. And they include every type of music, from symphonies and concertos to dance tunes and jazz hits. Make sure your record library includes this great music. Check RCA Victor's latest list of the 101 best-selling records at your record dealers tomorrow. Next, hear Theater Guild on the air on NBC.